Good morning and greetings from Singapore. My name is Kok Kiang from the Singapore Economic Development Board. It is my pleasure to join you here at the Hanover Messe Virtual Conference. First, allow me to give a quick introduction of EDB for those who are not familiar. The Singapore Economic Development Board, or EDB in short, is the leading government agency with the mission to create a sustainable economic development and good jobs for the people in Singapore. We are responsible for both the manufacturing and tradable services sector, which collectively accounts for more than 30% of the Singapore's economy. Now you can imagine why the work of EDB therefore connects us to Hanover Messe. I remember attending Hanover Messe back in 2019, the world's largest industrial fair. At that time, big crowds from around the world came together, so the state-of-the-art technology on display in abundance, and a sense of optimism. Some even call it the playground for industrialists. There's a lot of excitement about how technology, about how Industrial 4.0 is transforming the way goods is produced and supply chains are managed. Then COVID-19 hit, and 2020, as we all know, became an unprecedented year for all of us. Indeed, the COVID-19 is a test of countries and organizations' ability to adapt and respond to rapidly changing environment. Take the example of Hanover Messe, where we are now holding a virtual conference. Singapore is no different. Our GDP was adversely affected. It contracted 5.4% in 2020. It was our worst performance since independence. Both the manufacturing and the services sectors, our twin engines of growth, were adversely affected, particularly in the first half of 2020. We had our own version of a lockdown with the main focus on protecting lives and keeping our people safe. By the second half, we managed to stabilise the situation in Singapore and begin to open up business safely and sustainably. And as a result, we witnessed a strong rebound in manufacturing. The year 2020 ended with manufacturing expansion of 7.3%, led by growth in sectors such as electronic semiconductor, medical technologies, biopharmaceuticals, and precision engineering sectors. Some people didn't know that Singapore had a manufacturing sector. We like to tell people that, well, it is actually Singapore's best kept secret. But manufacturing is very significant part of our economy. It accounts for 21% of our GDP. According to the United Nations Comtrade database, Singapore is the world's fourth largest exporter of high-tech goods in terms of value add. Like many countries, we believe manufacturing is important for our economy for three reasons. First, economic diversification. As I mentioned earlier, manufacturing our services are our twin engines of growth. Having a resilient, competitive manufacturing sector actually increases the resilience of the Singapore's economy, as can be shown in 2020 the example I gave just now. Secondly, manufacturing actually allows us as a country to keep pace with advancement in technology. The manufacturing sector, while accounting for 21% of GDP, actually accounts for over 50% of the business expenditure in R&D here in Singapore. What this means is that manufacturing companies actually invest disproportionately in technology and in R&D. And it is this accumulation of technology capabilities that can then be applied to both existing and new growth areas, as well as in both manufacturing and services. Thirdly, manufacturing actually creates good jobs for the people in Singapore. Today, 13% of the workforce in Singapore participates in manufacturing activities. But the job scopes available are increasingly getting broad and diversified because of the implementation of technology beyond the traditional or the more traditional roles like production engineers and technicians, quality assurances. Because of the use of technology, we are seeing new opportunities in areas like software engineering, data scientists, and even artificial intelligence analysts. So all in all, the job scope for the manufacturing sector has continued to evolve. Now, why are companies investing in manufacturing in Singapore? and what type 
of manufacturing activities are we seeing? Maybe to just give everybody a sense, in the industrial space, for example, we have companies like Micron, Global Foundries, Applied Materials, Soltech, that are in the semicon and electronics areas. In aerospace, we have companies like Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, G Aviation. In healthcare, Illumina, GSK, Cervantes, Thermo Fisher, just to name a few. And in the precision engineering field, lights of Makino, and of course, Roder & Schwartz. But not many people know that beyond the industrial space, even in the consumer space, we do have companies manufacturing in Singapore. The likes of Dyson, Kimberly Clark, Shimano, PepsiCo, with the products that we are all familiar with, also have a presence here. Despite the challenging environment, these companies continue to keep faith in Singapore. We continue to see manufacturing investments that not only build new capacity, but also new capabilities. I'll give a few examples. BSF, for example, will supply the company's patented crop production products from Singapore. Beckton Dickinson, they are expanding their manufacturing of current product lines and also adding a new facility for blood cultured media production, known as BD Backtech. On the other hand, companies in Singapore are also making significant contributions to the global fight against the COVID pandemic. Thermo Fisher, as an example, developed the PCR test for diagnosing COVID-19 with components that are made and designed in Singapore. They are also building two new sterile filling lines to manufacture therapies and vaccines. We also see new innovation coming up from a consortium model. We developed made in Singapore 3D printed nasal swabs. This is done through a partnership between private sector, research institutions and government. And by leveraging additive manufacturing, the entire product development cycle, including patient trials, was completed within seven weeks. This has enabled rapid localization of production capabilities for critically needed medical supplies with potential for export to the region. The pace of digitalization has also been accelerated by COVID-19. Siemens, for example, set up their Advanced Manufacturing Transformation Center here, which provides guidance and support for Southeast Asian companies that are on their journey to Industry 4.0 adoption. Siemens also provided training to equip mid-career job speakers with fundamental skills in additive manufacturing and digitalization in the hope of capturing new job opportunities. Another example is Infineon. Infineon announced in 2020 that you will make Singapore its global AI innovation hub as part of its corporate-wide digital transformation. More than 1,000 employees in Singapore will be upskilled and trained in AI capabilities, and the company hopes to develop and deploy AI solutions covering the entire value chain of activities here in Singapore. We are also seeing investments in relatively new sectors. In the area of mobility, for example, the Hyundai Motor Group has announced setting up its innovation center here in Singapore, which will focus on innovation across a spectrum of mobility-related fields. It will develop new advanced manufacturing processes here that will in incorporate new technologies, artificial intelligence, data, and so on. And it will also include a manufacturing facility. In the area of agri-tech, it just will actually be building Singapore's largest plant protein isolates production facility. The company actually produces plant-based egg made from mud bees. It just has also just interestingly obtained regulatory approval from the Singapore Food Agency for the sale of cultured chicken meat in their nuggets products. And these nuggets will be manufactured in Singapore as well. So why are companies investing in Singapore? I think it's for three main reasons. One, I think Singapore has continued to strive to be an open, connected, and trusted place to do business. As an example, even in the most difficult of times in 2020, during our lockdown in the first half of 2020, our ports remain open, and our companies continue to manufacture and export freely, including in essential goods. Secondly, 
we have a very strong, skilled workforce that has built capabilities over the years. And a, there is a strong manufacturing ecosystem in and around Singapore, in the region, in Southeast Asia, that allows companies to be able to leverage the skills in Singapore and the networks in the region. Thirdly, there is still a lot of optimism about Southeast Asia and Asia as a growth region in the mid to long term, despite the short term uncertainties. After all, Southeast Asia, as an example, is home to 600 million people and is one of the largest consumer markets in Asia. So all this has made companies more confident to be investing in production facilities in this part of the world. Looking ahead, the environment remains challenging and uncertain because of COVID-19. Companies will be more cautious and they will need to spend time and effort looking at overcoming today's challenges while planning for the future. But in Singapore, we remain cautiously optimistic. As more and more people around the world get vaccinated, we hope the economy and the global economy will continue on the recovery trajectory. In our conversations with industries, with companies, there are three key observations. The first is really about what remained unchanged. And really what remained unchanged for companies is that Asia and Southeast Asia remains an attractive market. Companies are keen to assess the demand here for sophisticated products, given our younger demographics, the rising middle class and rapid digitalization. But what has changed, however, is that companies are increasingly looking to build supply chain resilience. As they say, just in case and not just in time. COVID-19 has exposed the vulnerabilities of depending on a single source or limited source of materials and components. Geopolitical forces have added complications to the layer of the land when it comes to the global production system. We are seeing greater reshoring regionalization and diversification to hedge against trade and travel restrictions. And therefore, in this building up of supply chain resilience, we think Southeast Asia will increase in terms of its importance in the global manufacturing base because of its wide ranging availability of natural resources and a young workforce. And thirdly, we feel digitalization and automation adoption will continue. In fact, in the post-COVID world, producing more with less in a safe and sustainable way actually means that Industry 4.0 and transformation will continue to be important. Of course, the progress will differ depending on the pace of recovery across the various sectors in manufacturing, but the long-term trend will remain. So with all that, what is Singapore doing to then support manufacturing companies and the manufacturing industry in this challenging time. I think there are five key areas. Number one, we will continue to invest in innovation and science and technology because we believe that investment in development of technology capabilities will support the growth and competitiveness of our economy. We have set aside 25 billion Singapore dollars for public sector research over the next five years. Manufacturing and supply chain will be a key focus. We have also put in place a number of model factories that offers state-of-the-art manufacturing facility equipped with industrial machines and digital systems that allows industry to collaborate with public sector researchers. Having a live pilot production line actually enables, for example, the SMEs to actually witness and interact with real-time systems so that they can better understand its effectiveness and how to deploy them in their own setup. At the same time, we are also setting up a number of national programs in emerging technology domains to help translate research into reality. Robotics and additive manufacturing are two such areas. In robotics, according to the latest report by the International Federation of Robotics, IFR, Singapore has the world's highest industrial robot density, with more than 900 robots per 10,000 manufacturing employees. Therefore, Singapore has a budding robotics ecosystem with companies such as Ombron, KHI, ABB, 
and even local companies like Hope Technic and PBA. We've also got a National Robotics Program Office that helps coordinate government efforts to drive end-to-end -end development, test bidding, and deployment of robotics technology. On additive manufacturing, today, there are already more than 300 companies within the local additive manufacturing ecosystem striving to adopt these technologies in our relevant industry segments such as healthcare, aerospace, transport. Companies here include HP, Makino, Evonik, Siemens, Thyssen Group, just to name a few. Besides innovation, science and technology, we also need to support companies in training and upskilling. Industry 4.0, as we all know, is not only about technology adoption. It is about optimizing around technology, process, and the workforce. And therefore, there is a need to upskill and build a strong pipeline of future-ready talent in order to harness the full potential of Industry 4.0. In the area of training, even back in 2018, we have already launched a training initiative called Skills Future Series for Advanced Manufacturing. It offers modular, bite-sized and skill-based courses to equip manufacturing workers with the relevant skills to meet changing needs. We also partner industry in our upskilling efforts. An example is actually the Bosch Rexroth Regional Training Centre. Launched in October 19, it leverages Bosch's technology, expertise and strong network to combine training with proof-of-concept projects and skill certification. Bosch will also be training beyond its own organisation needs so as to increase the adoption of advanced manufacturing across more enterprises in Singapore. We also need to better coordinate and align the delivery of training at the national level. And for that, we have set up the Advanced Manufacturing and Technology Academy in 2020 with two objectives. One is to identify new skill sets on an ongoing basis as manufacturing evolves. And the second is really working with the training ecosystem in Singapore to ensure sufficient training capacity and capability for the industry. Even that is not sufficient. We also need to be able to evolve HR practices in order to support the manufacturing transformation journey. For that, we have set up the Industry 4.0 Human Capital Initiative, which is an enabler program which aims to equip companies with people management and job redesign skills required for successful Industry 4.0 transformation. So that's the upskilling part. We also need to invest in infrastructure. As we all know, advanced manufacturing is not about making a single investment that will allow you to achieve breakthrough and competitive advantage for the long term. It is actually about incremental process improvements and innovation. Hence, it is important for companies to be close to other stakeholders so that they can better explore synergies, partnership, co-innovation. It's with this in mind that we developed the Jurong Innovation District. It is a 600 hectare, one-stop advanced manufacturing campus that will house a vibrant ecosystem of R&D institutions, training institutes, technology providers, and manufacturers that are implementing their factories of the future. It is this interaction that hopefully can bring about major breakthrough in terms of technology deployment over time in Singapore and in the region as well. Beyond infrastructure, one of the feedback we often get when talking to companies is that while many companies have heard about I4.0, is aware of I4.0 as a concept, but they struggle to decide where to start and how to start. To plug this gap, we have actually worked with industry partners to develop the Smart Industry Readiness Index. It is actually a suite of framework and tools to help manufacturers, regardless of size and industry, to start, scale, and sustain their manufacturing transformation story. It can also serve as a common language for the people within the company to debate, discuss about I4.0 adoption. The Smart Industry Readiness Index actually covers 
the three core elements of I4.0, which is process, technology, and organization. It is a simple to use yet robust diagnostic tool, which have gained sufficient traction over the last few years. In fact, we are now partnering World Economic Forum, WEF, and key industry partners to try and establish the index as an internationally recognized standard for I4.0 benchmarking and transformation. We are encouraging, we are working with WEF to encourage companies globally to take the assessments, to use that as a tool. And we want to be able to publish insight papers to share on these global developments so as to help the industry as a whole progress. Finally, the fifth point, given the increasing awareness of I4.0 in Asia, in Southeast Asia, in this part of the world, we also felt that there was a need to create a good regional platform for networking, for the exchange of ideas. In other words, to build a regional Industry 4.0 community. It's with that in mind that we partnered Deutsche Messe to bring the Asia-Pacific edition of Hanover Messe to Singapore, to the region. That is the Industrial Transformation Asia-Pacific. The first edition was held in 2018, well received, and we are looking forward to hosting this year's event again in October. And if that, we look forward to the opportunity to engage everyone then. Now I've come to the end of my sharing and presentation. I hope I've been able to share how companies, how industries, and Singapore's manufacturing sector are coping in this challenging environment while preparing for the future. In the case of Singapore, we will continue to push manufacturing transformation to build a competitive manufacturing sector. With the plans put in place that I've articulated, we want to grow manufacturing by 50% over the next 10 years and work towards our vision to make Singapore a global business, innovation and talent hub for advanced manufacturing. If I could summarize the three key takeaways from this session, the first is really that the pandemic actually underscores the importance of manufacturing to the world. In fact, it has not slowed down, and some would argue that it has accelerated manufacturing transformation and Industry 4.0 adoption. Two, Singapore continues to place great importance in manufacturing. We will continue to develop ourselves as an open, connected and trusted hub for companies who are looking at supply chain optimization in this part of the world. Thirdly, we want to partner like-minded companies who are working on manufacturing transformation on a global basis. There are two initiatives to highlight here. One is really the networking platform, Industry Transformation Asia Pacific, and two, the Smart Industry Readiness Index. We'll be showing a short video of the index at the end, and we'll be also putting up links to both the networking platform and the index in case you should need more information. Thank you and I look forward to the next time we can connect. Over the last few years, everyone's been talking about Industry 4.0 and digitalization. We all know it's the way forward, but the pace of adoption and manufacturing transformation has been slow. The reason for that is simple. We can't improve what we can't measure. Today, many companies still don't know where they stand in the Industry 4.0 landscape and how they compare against their peers. To bridge this gap, we came to the global manufacturing community in 2017 with the Smart Industry Readiness Index, or as the industry calls it, Siri. Siri is a suite of frameworks and tools that helps manufacturers, both big and small, to start, scale and sustain their manufacturing transformation. Since 2017, Siri has empowered over a thousand manufacturers worldwide. It's helped companies to learn new concepts, evaluate their facilities, architect transformation roadmaps and deliver results that bring value to their businesses. Fast forward to today and what started as a self-help program is stepping up to a new level. Today, we come to you with the official Siri Assessment, or OSA. We designed the OSA to balance technical rigor with practical applicability. 
it provides an independent review of your manufacturing operations by qualified individuals known as Certified Siri Assessors. These assessors are industry practitioners who've been trained to conduct such reviews accurately and objectively. We know you're busy, so we've made sure you can finish an OSA in a short time. In fact, all we need is just two days. Here's how it works. The OSA starts with a one-hour call. This allows the assessor to understand your company and establish the assessment scope. Next is the evaluation itself. The assessor will visit your company to conduct a workshop with the relevant senior executives and survey your facility. Depending on your facility's size and scope, this should take between one to one and a half days. Finally, the OSA ends with a half-day debrief to review the findings and explore next steps. At the conclusion of this exercise, you'll receive the assessment results in an official report. It covers the current state of your facility, key priorities for improvement, and your benchmarks against industry peers. The OSA is simple and non-disruptive. This means that our production can continue even as the assessment takes place. At the end of these two days, we know where we stand and how we compare against the others, not just locally, but also globally. This assessment is indeed an important exercise for any manufacturer who is serious about digital transformation. A big challenge that manufacturers globally face is that there are so many new developments happening around them faster than their ability to make sense of it. Besides, not everything new is necessarily relevant. The official Siri assessment is a powerful resource to help companies separate the substance from the noise and synthesize the essence of Industry 4.0 into an easy to understand universal framework to start things off on the right foot. After the official Siri assessment, your company is all set to take the next step in manufacturing transformation. You could share the findings with internal stakeholders, form in-house teams to start new projects, or even collaborate with technology partners to develop new solutions together. But if you're not ready for all that, it's okay too. The OSA is there as a guide and you can decide when's the best time to return to the topic. At Frex, we pride ourselves as a leader in pushing the boundaries of manufacturing innovation. And we are already seeing results of our digitalization effort. But Industrial 4.0 goes beyond technology adoption. It also explores the way we run processes and how we engage our people. The OSA complements our I4.0 framework, helping us to go one step further to effect change not just within the production area, but throughout our entire organization. This has given us the ability to deliver greater value to our customers worldwide. The future is now. Today, more than 350 companies around the world have taken the official Siri assessment. Our goal is to help catalyze your company's transformation and ride the Industry 4.0 wave. Join us and take the official Siri assessment today.